Hey everyone, Mango7 World here. How we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7, the Midnight Edition, where Mango waits up for patch notes and is not wearing any clothes, so he cannot put his webcam on and you have to deal with just my sweet little voice instead. So um, the patch notes are not out. I mean, they're out in Korea, but not in English yet. But we do have this and we can look at this while we patiently wait. And that is our eye candy of the day, Charles. He's a commander of the Order of the Sword, respected by all knights. He's exactly what I thought he was going to be. Maybe slightly different, but um, basically exactly what I thought. Uh, I thought he was going to be an Earth Knight, and I thought he was going to be very, very, very offensive. And that seems like exactly what he's going to be. So let's take a look here. Um, and one thing I want to know note is we learned how to pronounce Aether. It's apparently not Aether, like um, I've been pronouncing it, maybe I've been doing it wrong and everybody else has uh, been doing it right and I just haven't noticed, but it is absolutely Aether and not Aether as we see here. Or maybe they screwed up, but. He is extremely loyal. And my favorite part about him is he's just chilling, sitting on his chair, drinking some tea. I can get behind that little old man. Look at that, look at that. He even, he even whiffs it and takes the smell of it. That just makes me so happy. I really. It, it like makes me so happy when I see people enjoy stuff like that. Like the fact that he's smelling his tea just like, it just makes me so happy because I do the same thing, right? Like it just puts a smile on my face when I, I have a hot cup of tea and I like breathe in the first scent of it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but whatever gets a smile on your face, you know? And that just makes me want to pull for him more. So no surprises anywhere here. Um, he's an earth knight, he's a Gemini. They also have a triple S rule of light um, laughing at us there. And uh, yeah. He's got 15% crit chance or 14.4. There we go with Aether again. So the way his skill set works is he's got three abilities, obviously. Um, Mango, of course he has three abilities. Who has four abilities? That makes no sense. Um, he's got one which is called Slash. His first skill is um, just a single target damage dealing skill that has a chance to decrease the attack. I'm guessing it'll be 75% chance. Um, he also has a... Uh, chance to proc smash with slash so slash can turn into smash and smash is his second ability it's another single target thing that has a chance to dispel buffs i'm not sure the percent uh i'm again they'll probably have them in a little bit but i cannot wait to record this and it also um what else does it do it also uh proportionate the amount of buffs granted on the caster so in general you go to smash or you go to slash and then you have a chance to proc smash and what that does do a huge amount of damage and it also dispels and it also deals damage proportionate to the amount of buffs. And his third skill is actually really cool. It is a powerful attack skill that also increases the attack of the allies. It's a single target attack, kind of like Violet's, but it also buffs everybody with attack buff and it also buffs him with defense buff. It doesn't actually say that here, but it definitely does because if we scroll in a little bit, we can see the shield icon there and we can further see um, a little bit earlier. Yeah, a little bit later here, he does have defense buff up. Just him also. He gives uh, two turns attack buff to everybody else, um, and him included, and two turns of defense buff just for him. So that's uh, Charles for now. I'm pretty excited for him. I'm definitely going to be pulling, especially if his artifact is okay, just because um, I love his style, you know? He's just such a cool dude in the, the story. I love that he cares so much for Aether. Um, and I like his kid. I think his kid is really disruptive. I think his kid is really great for... Um, PvE. I think his kit is really great for PvP as well. I also um, am kind of wondering how his first skill works with Elbus's Ritual Sword. Like, could you imagine countering with Elbus's and um, doing a slash and smash combo? I, I don't know. I just feel like he's going to do a ton of damage with that, and that'll be super disruptive. So yeah, um, I'm going to wait a little bit for the patch notes to come out, and we'll see what's up in a second. Oh my god. I can't even. Um... Araminta is literally the best thing that's ever happened to anybody ever. Um, I think this design is freaking flawless. Holy crap. Um, let's zoom in this a little bit here. Look at this design. Oh my god. Um, I am so sad about this because this is an ML5 star we can assume. And the chance of me getting Araminta are literally like one in a billion. Um... She is definitely going to be my dream unit from now until the end of time. Everything about her is perfect. Um, I love the way she's just like the way she's standing on both of her two legs. By the way, she's got two darn legs down there. The way she's about to 
um, snap her fingers and light somebody up. And she's Araminta, the commander of the Silver Blade Company. Wow. Um, I know a lot of people get mad at me because I get so excited over everything. But if there's one thing in this, like, in this game or in this world that excites me, it's Araminta. She's been my favorite character I've ever had in any game ever. Like, bar none. I can't even think of anybody who even came close. Um, so I, I'm so excited for this. And the fact that she's getting an ML 5 star is just so exciting. And I just, I just hope I get her. Like, the chance of me getting her are one in a billion. But if I do, if I do, it's going to be the greatest thing in the world. Um, I'm going to read off the bottom here. It gives a little bit of backstory. Thank you, GM Dominiel, for this. This is such a cool way to announce a character. I love this, by the way. Um, it says, Araminta led around 50 members during the company's prominence and instilled great pride and respect into each of uh, the company members. After receiving an investigation request, Araminta travels to the land of death. However, due to her overconfidence and haughtiness, she ends up putting her team in great peril against the unknown. Right as her mistake is about to cause her to lose members of her company, Araminta is able to complete her quest with the help of mercenary Durin, who is wandering the land of death. Following the incident, Araminta falls in love at first sight with Durin and actively tries to charm him. However, Durin avoids Araminta's advances because he believes that he cannot marry someone when he is still unclear of his own identity. So that is such a cool backstory. I'm so excited to see this. She's just like... I've never liked a character so much in my life, like, I, in any character I've ever gone to. I just love everything about her. She's mysterious, she's, um, super sultry, is that the right word? She's super, um, uh, I don't know the right word for it, but she's not, like, a show-off, but she's a show-off, that makes sense. Like, she, she, uh, I don't know, I just love everything about her. Um, also, she's got two legs right there, two freaking legs, so I'm so excited about that. Uh, and I cannot wait to see what their story, and I really hope we see what happens, why things happen. We see more about Durin. I cannot wait to meet Durin too. Um, and I just can't say enough about her. So we're going to put her off to the side just for a second while we take a look at Dingo Reno. And Dingo looks amazing. Um, we knew he was going to look great, especially with that little face right there. He's got the solar hands from Yakate Japan. Um, and he's, as the one who first named Malakas, this is only natural. I love his three swords or daggers or whatever those are. I love everything about him too. Um, just a super elegant design. And it says originally far from what anyone would consider a normal human. He is now a completely normal upstanding member of society. Um, wait, does that mean this is after the original Dingo? I'm kind of confused because it says originally far from. Anyway, um, every word out of his mouth is considerate and he has impeccable manners. Members of the Wild Dog Company, not accustomed to the new Dingo, desperately try to change him back to his original state. Yep, so um, this is so cool. So this is legit the old Dingo, but like in the new form. I can't wait to see his story too. Uh, it says Sid especially feels guilty for Dingo's transformations because he was always the one to scold Dingo and tell him to act normal. I love this. I cannot wait to see more of this. Um, such a wonderful way to show heroes. And I, I really can't thank them enough for giving heroes backstory like this it just it just means so much more than just giving us new units you know anyways i'm gonna pause this again and see if we have some more new information and see what we've got left okay so here's the patch notes um i just want to take a really quick look at charles we'll skip over the things we've already seen um so one thing i do see here is effect chances doubled if the energy if the enemy is buffed so Say you go to attack Dien, you have a 25% chance regularly, but if she's buffed like she always is, 50% chance to proc his second skill and then um, dispel all buffs. And we can see it's a 100% chance to dispel all buffs while it is Molagorad. I imagine that'll be um, four Molagoras to max that out. Or four skill ups, I'm not sure how many Molagoras. So that's really cool. Um, Pretty cool. Ah, Soul Burn extends duration by one turn, too. That's pretty nice, because that's a three-turn defense buff. That is awesome. Ooh, Justice for All. Look at that art. Holy. Um, grants the caster a random buff for one turn with a 50% chance at the end of the turn. Holy. So that's super cool. Um, I'm not sure if that's good, but that's random. And all the buffs you can get, like, you could get, um, like, can you get Lydica's buff? 
like the the immunity buff can you get immunity you can get so many different things um i kind of wonder if that's limited to anything i uh, really excited about this um it doesn't say anything about limited so i don't think he's limited whatsoever um the meaning of justice so cool so cool so cool um what else do we see here Ooh, hype we get to see more iceria that's awesome and here we go six freaking fused nerves eight sun badges 15 rings of glory oh lord all of the rewards so awesome um what else do we have here Ooh, ooh, we have ah oh, three transmit stones come on i'm gonna i'm gonna actually copy and paste this to dom now and be like this isn't cool buddy um okay so what does this say Equipment enhancement system has been improved. Regardless of grade, the main stat of items at the same level will always have the same base value. The stats of items required prior to this update. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to lose my crap because um, this meant if this was retroactive, if that's the right word, it would upgrade all of our 10% attack, which is 50% attack, up to 60% attack. So now this means um, blue items can almost be as good as epics, which is really, really, really cool. Uh, so a good example of this is um, in the shop, you have uh, the first two rarities of um, rings be 10%. The third rarity is 11%, and then the fourth rarity is 12%. But if I'm understanding this correctly, um, all the rarities will be the same percent. The order in which substats are added to the item hasn't changed until an item has four substats. A new substat is added every three levels after reaching... Four substats. Using an item's grade. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta read this. Did they did they literally be different from Summoner's War than change it literally to Summoner's War? They did, right? Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, they they changed it to Summoner's War, right? Like, am I am I misunderstanding? Because before in Summoner's War. It would roll onto the initial one. So they literally change it to Summoner's War. That is hilarious. Um, chat report. Yep, I'll take chat report, but I don't care about that. Um, other improvements. Five star have been added. Are available from summoning tickets. Um, can check the probability. Good. So that's 12.5%, right? Oh, 15%. I thought it was 12.5%. So 15% of a five star from four to five star tickets. That's pretty cool. Um... Anything else? Tamarin now correctly uses her skill Song of the Forest to heal Ally, so that means she's not gonna proc go away every turn by the sounds of it. Um Interesting, interesting, interesting. So not much more here by the looks of things. Specimen says his voice has been acted. We really, really needed that. Um Okay, and that's about it. Okay. So, pretty small patch, nothing really too big here outside of Araminta being announced and Dingo being announced, so I'm pretty stoked for that. Um, so that's about all we're going to talk about today. Uh, as for whether or not you should pull, I can't really say until we see him in game and see his stats and see everything, but overall he looks pretty solid. His um, artifact looks very, very weird and interesting, and I'm not sure if it's good. One of those things we have to see what the pool of buffs are. Um... I think it's especially decent for maybe somebody like Charlotte, but maybe not so great for somebody like Clurry. Um, like the more offensive knights, it was knight, right? Just to be sure. Um, yeah, knight exclusive. I just wanted to make sure I didn't screw that up there. But yeah, um, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always. And please, 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 please send your prayers to Deesh for me to get my Araminta. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. And again, waving to the camera. Thank you.